Hello everyone and welcome to the second of Walker's lessons. In this lesson we're going to talk about how whales and dolphins feed, what they feed on and we're going to have a look at some ocean food chains too. My name is Anna and I work for Orca. Orca are a whale and dolphin conservation charity who are absolutely dedicated to the protection of whales, dolphins and porpoises and their homes in the oceans around the UK and the rest of the world. So before we look at how cetaceans, remember that word meaning whales, dolphins and porpoises, how they feed, it's important to know what they feed on. So an animal is either a herbivore, a carnivore or an omnivore. So a herbivore is an animal that only eats plants, such as a rabbit eating grass. A carnivore is an animal that only eats other animals, so for example a tiger eating gazelles, cheetahs and monkeys. Or they can be an omnivore, which is an animal that eats both plants and animals. For example, a grizzly bear that eats berries, fruits and nuts, but it also eats salmon. So do you think whales, dolphins and porpoises are herbivores, carnivores or omnivores? All whales and dolphins are carnivores, so they only eat other animals. As we already know, whales, dolphins and porpoises can be split into two groups, those with teeth and those with baleen. And we already know that all dolphins and all porpoises and some whales, like the sperm whale, have teeth. But most whales, like the blue whale, the humpback whale and the grey whale, do not have teeth. They have something called baleen instead. And in this picture here, we can see a humpback whale opening its mouth. And the picture there you can see is just the top of its mouth. And the baleen is that brown bristly brush that's hanging from their top jaw. And this brush helps them to filter feed. And baleen is made out of something called keratin. That's the same material as our hair and our fingernails. And in this video, you can see one baleen plate and look how bristly it is at the bottom and all around the edge and it's those bristles there that help to trap bits of food in the whale's mouth which we'll talk about a bit later on. Now that's just one baleen plate and whales have hundreds of these baleen plates hanging from their top jaw all tightly squished together to form a really thick bristly brush in their mouth. The blue whale is a fantastic example of a baleen whale. As we already know, the blue whale is the largest animal that's ever lived on our planet, bigger than any of the sharks or dinosaurs. We already know its heart is the same size as a small car and that its tongue is about the same size as an elephant. But what do you think these animals feed on? Do you think the blue whale feeds on cod and other large fish? Or seaweed? Or burgers? Or krill, which are tiny shrimp-like creatures? Or sharks? What do you think the blue whales eat? So a blue whale's favourite food, like many whales, is krill, these tiny shrimp-like creatures. And they're absolutely tiny, they are only a few centimetres long, so they're about the same size as your little finger. And of course, the blue whale wouldn't eat them individually. One by one, that would take far too much time, energy and effort. And what the whale does is it looks for big pink clouds in the sea. So these tiny krill swarm together to form this mass of krill, millions and millions of them all in one go, which the blue whale opens up its mouth and eats them all in one go. So let's just go back and have a look at the other options because there was a reason I put the rest of them in. So, of course, the blue whale doesn't eat burgers. But just to give you an idea of how much a blue whale has to feed on, if the blue whale did eat burgers, it would have to eat over 8,000 burgers every day to survive. And we definitely don't suggest that you try that at home. The blue whale would not eat any seaweed, because seaweed is a plant, and as we already know, all whales, dolphins and porpoises are carnivores, so they would not eat seaweed. And the blue whale would not be able to eat anything like large fish or sharks, firstly because they don't have any teeth to catch these animals in the first place, but secondly, even though the blue whale is massive, 
its throat, where it swallows food, is only about the same size as a grapefruit, so it would not be able to eat anything larger than that. So yes, humans would be able to fit in a blue whale's mouth. It's thought that a hundred people could sit on the blue whale's tongue, but it certainly would not be able to swallow any of you. So the baleen whales, they feed on a huge amount of tiny prey all in one go. And this is how they do that. When they see a big group of krill or maybe some small fish in the water, they open up their mouth really wide. And the types of baleen whales that we see in European waters are called rorquals. And that means they have this kind of special muscly skin that runs from the bottom of their mouth all the way down to their belly button. And when the whale opens up its mouth to engulf lots of food and water, that skin opens up and expands like a parachute opening up in the air. So when the whale swims towards the group of food, it opens up its mouth to scoop up as much food and water as possible and that skin opens up and expands so the whale can engulf a huge amount of prey and water. And then the whale will close its mouth. And in its mouth now, it's got loads of tiny bits of food, but also lots of seawater as well. Now you'll know that seawater doesn't taste very nice and actually it wouldn't be very healthy for the whale to swallow that amount of water all in one go. So what the whale does is it uses its huge tongue and it starts to contract that skin to push out all of the water. Now the baleen hanging from the whale's top jaw acts like a giant sieve. So as the whale is pushing all the water out, the bristly baleen brush has tiny gaps in it, which are just big enough to allow the water to escape back out into the ocean. But the gaps in the baleen are not big enough to allow any of the food to escape. So all the tiny bits of krill and fish get stuck in the baleen brush. And once the whale has squeezed all the water out of its mouth, it runs its tongue along the inside of the baleen and it rolls all the food into a big ball, which it then swallows whole. So that's how a baleen whale feeds on a huge amount of tiny food all in one go. And in this picture here, we can see a blue whale lunge feeding on the surface. That's the left hand side of the blue whale's body you can see there. And if you look really closely, you can see tiny microscopic bits of krill being trapped in the whale's mouth. Have a look and see if you can see that. And in this video, we can see a type of whale called a say whale and it's feeding. So it swims up to a group of small fish, opens up its mouth, you can see the rorqual pleats it open up and expand like a big parachute, scooping up all the fish. You can see lots of birds there trying to catch the fish too. Now remember the whale would not swallow the birds because its throat isn't big enough. And as the whale swims away, you can see bubbles coming out the side of the whale's mouth. And that's the whale squeezing out all the water just to leave the food in the whale's mouth trapped in the baleen brush. And next we've got an activity that you can do to help you understand how the baleen whales feed. All you'll need is a bowl, a sieve, some rice and some water, and then either a small jug or a milk bottle. And I'm going to show you how to make a whale out of a milk bottle. You will need an adult to help you with this activity. So first of all, we have our milk bottle here, and this is a really good way of reusing something before we recycle it. And we're going to draw an eye on either side, and we're also going to draw a mouth, like you can see in the picture there. What you'll need to do now is kindly ask an adult to help you to cut out the mouth for you for the whale. So now we've got our whale, that we're going to use for the activity and you can even draw on a little fin there if you want to. So here we've got our milk carton whale that I've made here and with this activity I've actually printed and laminated some pictures of krill but rice works just as well and the whale swims along, opens up its mouth to engulf all the krill. But as the whale's opened its mouth underneath the water, its mouth also fills up with seawater. 
and the sieve is going to represent your baleen. So the whale squeezes out all the food and water out of its mouth and the sieve, the baleen, traps all the bits of food but the water flows out into the bowl which represents our ocean. So then the whale can swallow all of the food without swallowing all the water as well. The humpback whale is also a type of baleen whale and in certain places around the world they do this behaviour called bubble net feeding. So in this video you can see a whale blowing bubbles out of its blowhole in a circle and that acts like a bubble net trapping fish so that they can't escape. And once the whale's blown the bubbles it comes up out of the water, engulfs all the fish trapped in the bubble net before squeezing out the water out of its mouth just to leave those fish trapped in its mouth. How amazing is that? So now we know how baleen whales feed, we're now going to look at how the toothed whales feed. And as the name suggests, they have teeth for feeding. But they don't actually use their teeth for chewing their food like humans do. They just use these teeth for catching and grabbing their prey and then they swallow it whole. So a porpoise is a good example, first of all, of a toothed cetacean. And harbour porpoises feed continuously all throughout the day. And their diet consists of over 20 different species of fish, octopus, squid and shellfish. And harbour porpoises eat about 10% of their body weight each day. And they weigh about 53 kilograms. So 10% of 53 kilograms is 5.3 kilograms. That's about the same as a cat. So quite a lot of food to eat during the day. And the bottlenose dolphin uses its huge, sharp teeth to feed on quite large fish and squid. And in this incredible picture here, taken in Scotland, you can see a bottlenose dolphin trying to eat a salmon whole, which it does very successfully. As you already know, the killer whale, or the orca, is the largest type of dolphin. And orcas have a really diverse diet, but individual pods around the world often specialise in particular types of prey. So some feed exclusively on fish, whilst others hunt marine mammals, such as seals and other whales and dolphins. Orcas around South Africa are even known to eat great white sharks and orcas around New Zealand specialise in eating stingrays. And they have amazing feeding techniques to hunt these animals. Because orcas mainly hunt in their pod, in their group, it means they can feed on an animal much larger than themselves. If you imagine a group of hyenas eating a giraffe for example, because they feed in a group and they hunt in a pack, they can feed on a really large animal. Orcas have even been known to hunt a fully grown blue whale, and that was a group of over 50 killer whales hunting one huge blue whale. They're also known to create huge waves in the sea, which wash seals off rocks and ice packs. So these are very clever animals, which use a huge variety of different techniques to hunt their prey. Okay, so for this next activity, we're just going to do a little game to recap which types of whales have teeth and which have baleen. Now you can either do this on the screen, and I'm going to put a picture of an animal up on the screen, for example, this blue whale here. And if you think the blue whale has baleen, I want you to point to the left-hand side of the room. But if you think the whale has teeth, I want you to point to the right-hand side of the room. 
So if you can do this activity by pointing, or what you could do if you fancied a little run around, was you could write on a piece of paper baleen and write on another piece of paper teeth, and you could pop this around your house and you could run to whichever one you think. So if you think the blue whale had baleen, you could run to wherever you would put your baleen sticker. And if you think that the whale had teeth, you could run to wherever you would put your teeth sticker. Okay, so the blue whale, what do you think? Does it have baleen or teeth? The blue whale has baleen. Okay, next one. What do you think with this dolphin? Now this is a species of dolphin called the white-beaked dolphin because they have a white beak, which is their mouth. But do you think the white-beaked dolphin has baleen or does it have teeth? The white-beaked dolphin has teeth. Next up is the sperm whale. So do we think the sperm whale has baleen or teeth? The sperm whale has huge teeth. It's actually got the largest teeth of any animal on the planet. This whale is called the minke whale, and it's a whale that we see a lot around the UK coastline. So do we think the minke whale has baleen or teeth? It has baleen. What about the orca or killer whale? This huge predator has teeth. The humpback whale has baleen. And the last one is the harbour porpoise, which has teeth. Well done. How many of those did you get right? So now we're going to have a look at some food chains and all animals belong in a food chain and a food chain shows the transfer of energy between animals. So all living things need energy to survive and they get this from their food. Producers like plants make their own food using a combination of air, water and sunlight. But consumers, they don't make their own food, so they get their energy from eating other animals and plants. And animals that eat other animals are called predators, and the animals they eat are called prey. So a food chain always starts with a producer and ends with a really big hungry animal, which is the predator. So let's see if we can put a food chain together. So here we have four different animals or plants and we're going to try and put them in order. So we have zooplankton which are very tiny plants which you can't even see with your eye, you need a microscope to see them. We have large squid, common dolphins and some small fish as well. So let's try and work out who eats who. Which of these items here do you think is the producer in this food chain? It's zooplankton, so tiny plants, which get their energy from the sun. What animal do you think eats the zooplankton? It's small fish. And small fish then get eaten by the large squid, which then gets eaten by big hungry common dolphins. This next food chain is a bit more complicated. We have six items on this food chain, so have a go at putting them into order of who eats who, and we'll see how you get on. So every food chain actually starts with the sun, because that's where any plant gets their energy from, like zooplankton. The zooplankton then get eaten by herring, which then gets eaten by tuna. Tuna gets eaten by a bottlenose dolphin, which then gets eaten by the top predator of the ocean, the orca or the killer whale. Okay, so let's recap on lesson two. 
We now know that all cetaceans are carnivores. We know that toothed whales feed on large prey one by one using their teeth, and that baleen whales feed on thousands of small prey in one go using their baleen plates. And we've had a look at a few food chains as well, and we know that orcas are top of the ocean food chain. Thank you so much for listening to Lesson 2. If you want to learn more about orca or make a donation to support our work, please visit our website, www.orcaweb.org.uk. Thank you so much for your support.